Hello, BookTube. Months and months ago, you may remember that Ollie of Criminali, the Dark Lord of our little corner of BookTube, the man who made us all read garbage for an entire month and enjoy it. <laughs> months and months ago, Ollie came up with this, this idea of reading a hundred of his own books before he read, before he bought another book. And the idea caught on. As unholy and pernicious as it was, it caught on. And he has revived it with tears now, so that not only T-E-A-R-S, which is what happens when book people stop themselves from buying books, but also T-I-E-R-S, which is different ways that you can do the new, revived, and more evil than ever 100 book challenge, where you read 100 things that you already own. Read what you own before you go and buy more. And it doesn't have to be 100 books. The tears let you out at different levels of exquisite torture. But but it's read what you own. And I've always thought that these that this challenge was a little strange. I never really understood why it would catch on, why it would start, why so many people would start to do it. And uh, a number of you pointed out the last time Ollie did this that one of the reasons that I find that hard to understand is because a huge percentage of the books that I have in my personal library are read. A number of you pointed that out to me years ago when I did my last library tour, that I was pulling library book after, I was pulling book after book off the shelf and talking about it because I'd already read it. There were there was only a small fraction of books that were that was actually in my connection that I hadn't already read. Uh, I got the impression from quite a few of you that during those library tours, both the one I did a couple of years ago and the one I did a couple of years before that, that that arrangement is rare. Most people aren't like that. I guess I never really credited it, though, until, until the 100 Book Challenge started to appeal to people. And then just recently, uh, Michael K. Vaughn <laughs> delved even deeper into iniquitous insanity by proposing a 500 book challenge that you read 500 books you already own before you buy another book now, there are a few exceptions a few a little bit of wiggle room here and there but as a couple of people have pointed out that it represents for most people many years of reading there are all kinds of readers in the world right and thankfully we have developed, I hate to use the word community, it's hackneyed and often wrong, it's often vindictive. In this case, it's largely true, I would have said before last summer that it was completely true, but it's still largely true that we have built a community here, and in this community, uh, we, really, we really don't indulge in the kind of knee-jerk, stupid judgments that you will get elsewhere in a lot of reading communities. You'll get it in, for instance, a book club that you join, something like that. We don't really do that sort of thing. Ollie has actually led the charge in making sure that we don't judge each other for what kinds of things we read. I've also been a champion of that for my entire life. And also, the accoutrements of that, where we keep them, what formats we like. Uh, Greg, in another Bibliophile Reads, for instance, is on board with the 100 Book Challenge and is an ardent fan of audiobooks, for instance. And all across the board like that. Sarah at the Bookish Schnitter loves romance novels. And we all just take that in. Instead of drawing these stupid, pedantic fences around our snobbery, we all just sort of take that in. That's very good. That's very refreshing. I have a lot of other people in my life to talk about books with, but I don't have many people like that. So to have access to a community where everybody's like that, and we're all, and yet we're all perfectly happy, despite the fact that we don't judge each other's reading, we're still perfectly happy to poke fun at each other all the time. That is just a wonderful combination. And one of the little elements in that atmosphere, that non-judgmental, non-holier-than-thou atmosphere, is the frank acknowledgement that some people just read faster than other people do. Uh, Ollie, for instance, himself, gets a huge amount of reading done. I suspect that he does a lot of that reading on work-related commuting trains and buses and whatnot. And Greg, another Bibliophile Reads, mentions that he is retired, so he has more time to read. But that isn't all of it. That Some people just read faster than other people. No shame, no no superiority, no nothing or other. I'm one of those people. I It's my job, so it, in this case, technically, Greg and Ollie and I would all have three different reasons. A lot of you are really, really busy. 
And a lot of you are really, you know, you're just, you're reading differently. You're reading, maybe you're sub-vocalizing. Maybe you, you like to really absorb in a way that I don't. But uh, even so, even if you read quickly, 500 books is a huge investment. It's a huge commitment to do. And yet, it seems like Greg and another Bibliophile Reads and maybe David Wiley are, are contemplating joining Michael K. Vaughn in this, and who knows if other people aren't too. Michael has a vast audience. Who knows if other people in the audience who don't have channels are thinking about joining him. And as as Booktube's unofficial spiritual counselor, I thought I should weigh on, in on this subject because I want to, I want to make a, a statement and I also want to ask a serious, searching question, a, a confessional booth question. Because one, I'll, we'll start with the question. Because one of the things that when Michael K. Vaughn made his video, I'll try to remember to leave a link to him and to Ollie's latest iteration of Read What You Own Challenge. But uh, when Michael was making his video, uh, quite apart from the blasphemy, the heresy of telling book people they can't go book buying anymore, I, the main thought I had was 500 books that you own, that you haven't read, 500? That's a staggering number. A staggering number. And yet, if two popular booktubers have made video, have, have contemplated joining this challenge, then who knows how many out there are in the same boat. And that made me want to ask you a searching confessional booth question. How many of you have 500 unread books in your collection. Maybe Ollie was right all along. We should have that printed on a t-shirt. <laughs> Instead of Ollie made me read it, we should have Ollie was right all along. Maybe he was right all along. Maybe this pro this problem that dates back all the way to my earliest library tour when a lot of you were talking to me about this is actually more widespread and worse than I thought. Is it possible that a large number of you have not dozens, but hundreds of of unread books in your collection? Hundreds? 500? Is there anyone out there who has more than that? I don't know. Before I started BookTube, I would have said, no, come on. <laughs> come on, that's not possible. And one of the reasons why I would have thought that is because most of the people I knew who I talked about books with before BookTube were book critics, whose job it was to read all the books in their collection. So, But now I'm starting to wonder if maybe there isn't a bit of wisdom in challenges like this. If you have, I mean, Michael Kavon never, he never, in his video where he was contemplating a 500 book challenge, he never for a minute, to my recollection, ever raised the possibility that it was a freakish thing to have 500 unread books. He seemed to just state it as a number, <laughs> that's all. And I, don't, I didn't get any real hint of astonishment in the letter, in the comments to that video. So now I'm starting to wonder how many of you have hundreds of unread books in your collection. If that's true, then challenges like this make sense. If that's true, they, that might be what Ollie knew that I didn't know, which is that because that's a problem, right? If you have 100, 200, 400, 500 unread books in your collection, then you have a book buying problem. Obviously, you're buying books 10 times faster than you can read them, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's the confessional box question that I want to ask. How many of you are like that? What are your percentages? Basically, that's what I want to know. How many books do you own? I'm about to embark on a gigantic year-end census of my own books. I'm actually going to take a bunch of post-it notes and count every book I own. Every single one. No estimates with double-stacked bookcases. I'm going to count every single one and get a total. But what I want to know is, what is your total? And what is your percentage of books read out of that total? I'm horrified at some of the answers that I might get. But that's my confessional booth question, is how many of you does this apply to? But then my statement kind of flies in the face of my confessional booth question. The confessional booth question is based on the proposition that if you have hundreds of unread books in your collection and you're still buying books, you've got a book buying problem. And you should address it. But the statement is meant to say something else. Maybe not in the necrotic excess of what we may be facing here, but the statement is meant to say that when you are buying books, you are not supplying an immediate need. Your book collection is meant to satisfy not only the you of the past, 
a lot of you make sentimental book purchases. It's not only meant, obviously, it's meant to satisfy the you of the present. What do I feel like reading? But it's also meant to satisfy the you of the future. Not just distantly in the future, but maybe two days from now. When something you read in a book that you're reading now makes you want to go to your shelf for a book, a specific thing or even a general topic, not go to a bookstore for that book, much less in the 500 book challenge, go to a bookstore four years from now, <laughs> but rather go to your bookshelf right now for that book. That's why there's no, I would have said there's no real shame in book buying. Obviously, you know I think that because I, I shop at the Brattle at least once a week. But I read what I get at the Brattle. I don't just get it and then pile it up somewhere. I get it and go through it. I'm reading some of those books the same day. And I'm getting the sneaking, unhealthy suspicion that that's not true with a lot of the rest of you. So I wanted to make a statement in defense of indiscriminate book buying. Where you go to a big library sale, how many of you, if you take on these challenges, whether it's read what you own at whatever tier, or the 500 book challenge, how many of you are going to be able to resist your next library book sale? Do you mean, you honestly mean to tell me if you do the 500 book challenge, you're going to say, well, the library book sale is in a week, but I'm not going to go? <laughs> with the library, the friends of the library saying, you can fill a satchel with books and we'll charge you a dollar? Just get them out of here? You're going to pass that up? I don't think so. <laughs> don't think so. I don't think you are, and I don't think Michael K. Vaughn is there, okay? I cast doubt on Mr. Popularity on our corner of book two. I don't think he's got the cobbles. <laughs> I think Roger Hotep will be buying books by the end of the year. <laughs> Could be wrong. Certainly, the thing that would make me wrong, for him or anybody, would be underestimating mo the motivation involved, and that would be I would underestimate your motivation if I am underestimating just what kind of a problem we're talking about here. So that's what I want to know. Do you have hundreds of unread books in your possession? And if so, why? Why the F? <laughs> why would you have hundreds of unread books if you know by now your reading speed and the time you have available for it? Why would you do that? <laughs> why? <laughs> I want the answer to that question, and I also want to put out a, a defense of building a personal library, even though it's full of many books that you haven't read. I'm not sure that we would take that as far as 500, but there is a point to having a certain amount of plastic elasticity in your personal book collection. So that if it's a dark and stormy day, if sleet is hitting the windows, if you don't feel like buying online, as well you shouldn't, because all of your data is tracked, all of it is... Uh, but you've got a yen to read a particular thing and you don't have it. Anyway, <laughs> I've, I, my reaction to the read what you own challenge and also the 500 book challenge has been largely confusion and bewilderment. And I want you to help me with that. Tell me if these things apply to you. If you took the 500 book challenge, could you do it? Do you actually own 500 books you haven't read? <sighs> I want to hear all about it. I think it's going to scarify me, but I want to hear all about it, so feel free to tell me, and don't even suggest that I'm going to take this challenge, not in a million years, not in a million years, I will be back to the battle next week, <laughs> thank you, Booktube.